What's up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. If you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health and when talking about different subjects going on in the YouTube community, what I'm trying to do is see what we can learn from them, all right, to improve our own mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that kind of combination of things going on on YouTube as well as self-improvement, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. Most of you can see I'm out of town, so make sure that you follow me over on Instagram and Twitter for updates, and uh, I've been writing blogs and everything like that, mental health blogs, so make sure you follow me. So yeah, the internet has been rejoicing, all right, because Onision finally got banned from Patreon, all right? So I'm gonna be discussing this, and just a few disclaimers real quick. So with what I'm gonna be talking about, first off, I debated on making this video. I just did a little Twitter thread about this and I was debating on making this because I promised you guys a few weeks ago, like I am making sure I'm not gonna put out content unless I think it can benefit you, unless I think that you can get value. I don't wanna just do commentary and share my opinions. Everybody has their opinions on things, right? But I decided to make this video because I, I wanna discuss the, the bigger topic of being emotional and very narrow-minded on a situation and we forget the broader effects on what happens, right? Especially when we're emotional. When we're emotional, we are not using that thinking part of the brain, the prefrontal cortex. And the other thing that I wanna talk about, when it comes to this Onision situation, like, I, I will say, like, honestly, I don't know. I do not know what the solution is when it comes to his children. I'm a father myself, I have worked in addiction treatment with a lot of people who were at one point unfit to be parents, like myself, I was unfit to be a parent in my drug addiction and everything like that. But working with people, I, I do think about the effects on children. Um, I was the son of an alcoholic mom, messed me up. Uh, I ended up becoming an addict, but you know, I'm doing pretty well now. One of the reasons I'm out of town is because I'm spending the holidays with my mom, who's 14 years sober now, you know? But anyways, like I said, I do not know the right answer for this situation. All right, so what I wanna talk about first is I've been reading a book recently uh, called The Knowledge Illusion. Great, great, great book. Like, it talks about how even the smartest people, how they make the dumbest decisions, <laughs> you know? And like, if like scientists and, you know, just the, the geniuses of the world can make dumb decisions, like, I thought I would read that book and have it take me down a few notches, you know, I, I, I recommend it a lot, but um, there's, you know, the knowledge illusion, a lot of it talks about, uh, you know, we think we know stuff. We think we do and we don't always know stuff. But anyways, another great book is Mental Models by Shane Parrish. And that's where he talks a lot about second level thinking or second order thinking, something along those lines. When you do something, what's gonna happen after that, right? Like so many of us, when we're talking about that narrow focused mind and the decisions we make, we think about, okay, I'm gonna do this to get this result, right? And we don't think about what happens after it. We're like, we'll worry about that later, right? Like maybe we'll eat a tub of ice cream. We, don't, we, we want that now, but the, re the result is stuff like this, I'm being a little bit chunky, right? So let me explain to you real quick why I am more pro-choice. Well, well, not more pro-choice, I am pro-choice, right? Like I don't believe in like, you know, nine month, you know, uh, abortions or anything like that. But here's one of my issues with the pro-life um, side of the debate is a lot of people don't have that second order thinking, right? So many people, not all people, but many people who are on the pro-life side of things, they also don't, they're not really fans of government assistance and programs that help kids, right? So many people who make the decision not to bring a life into this world, um, it's probably the best decision they can make. They know that they're not ready to be a parent. They know if they have that child, there will be issues. The, the kid won't get the life that they deserve. And we have to realize too, when you have a messed up childhood, you become a messed up adult, right? That um, can lead to mental illness. It can lead to, you know, uh, more poverty. It can lead to, you know, crime, all sorts of stuff, 
like when we're kids we can get messed up so one of my biggest issues with the pro-life side of the debate is like okay you guys want all these kids to be born but you don't want to assist these kids once they're outside of the womb right so when i look at the pro-life side of things i i don't really see that second order thinking i i don't they're not really looking at the bigger picture of how are we going to support these children and ensure that they live a good life if we just banned abortions, right? So when it comes to the Onision situation, and again, let me re reiterate, this is a disclaimer because I can just imagine the ignorant comments down below. Um, everybody was, you know, they wanna get them off the platform. They wanna get them off, you know, Patreon. They really wanna get them off you know, YouTube, obviously, get him off Twitter for the terrible things he's done. Like, has has what he's done been terrible? Absolutely. All right? But here's the thing. Everybody knows that he has children. Everybody knows that. Like, that is common knowledge. And, you know, with all of the efforts that have gone into taking him off of, you know, social media and everything like that, the children have been an afterthought, in my opinion. So, like I said, it's something that, like, um, I, I'm working on myself. Like, I'm always trying to have that second order thinking. Like, if we do this, what happens after that? Like, as much as we all hate Onision and want him off the platform, the reality is, is that the platform that is giving him money is also supporting those children. All right? And aside from that, when we think about, when we think about, you know, um, him getting in trouble, like uh, apparently the FBI might be looking into him and stuff like that, what's going to happen to the children? All right, let's say him and Kai both get in trouble. Like, is anybody going to take those kids in who's been part of getting Onision deplatformed? Because again, like when I look at the pro-life side of the debate, it's like, what happens to those kids, right? Like, not all foster kids grow up screwed up, you know what I mean? But I've known many people who grew up in the foster system and they had terrible experiences, awful experiences, right? Lack of funding, um, some parents who just, uh, hoard children to get the benefits from the government and things like that and it it becomes this whole thing and like i said i don't know i don't know what the solution is like are these kids better off with that guy or not you know and you know the last thing i want to talk about is you know um when when people like myself or maybe even people like you when we talk to somebody who's been you know especially like assaulted right we think you know why didn't you go to the police why didn't you do this why didn't you do that and a few years ago one of my friends one of my good friends she was sexually assaulted and obviously you know my first thought is like you got to turn this guy in like you got to turn this guy in and get him off the streets right but it gave this whole situation gave me an understanding as to why some people don't go to the authorities because the the man who assaulted her this this monster was also a father he was also a father raising his kids and um she she explained that to me and she explained that's why she wasn't going to the police because it would affect those kids right she was using that second order thinking and i'm not saying that you know you shouldn't turn in you know your uh uh the the predators who assault people but I have a better understanding of why some people don't. You know what I mean? And I hope that helps some of you out there, especially us men out there, understand why some people don't turn somebody else in because maybe they're worried about how it'll affect the family, how to do this, right? Like um, something I was taught in 12-step programs with the ninth step is we make amends you know, wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. So basically what that means is, is like, let's say I was having an affair with some, you know, married woman, right? And as part of my ninth step, I was like, you know what? I need to make an amends to her husband. And they have kids and everything. And I go over there and I make amends to this husband. And then he finds out about this affair she was having. And then they get divorced. The kids are affected. So except when to do so would injure them or others. So like I said, I don't know if there's a right or wrong. 
you know, I don't know what's right and what's wrong. You know, I, I think uh, it's just a conversation I wanted to have with all of you guys. Like, when we're caught up in these emotions, we need to think of the bigger picture, right? Like, I used, I used the pro-life versus pro-choice debate as an example. Um, it's just something that we need to think about. Like, what is the ripple effect? Who else will be affected by the things that we're trying to get done, the things that we're trying to accomplish, you know, whatever we wanna do, you know? And so hopefully, if nothing else, I hope you leave this video with just looking at different situations, the different things that you want, especially when it comes to punishment and things like that, that we all try to look at the bigger picture. You know what I mean? Because these kids have been part of this equation the entire time. And one of the things that bothers me is when those children or have been like an afterthought you know what I mean and you know if I'm just being honest part of it part of that is very personal to me too with stuff that happened to me earlier this year a lot of it I brought on myself and something I discussed um, you know openly was nobody was really thinking about you know how that would affect my child you know what I mean um, you know he's resilient as hell and we made it through it and I'm financially stable now and you know, and all that, but just something we need to think about, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. Not sure what my schedule is going to be like the next couple of days because of the holidays. So if I don't talk to you, have an amazing Thanksgiving, all right? I'll talk to you all soon.